Good morning. We're here at Horasis for the 16th India Meet in Athens. And I'm very honored to be joined by Tamara Sigur Hall, the managing partner at CGT Partners. Thank you for having me. How are you enjoying Athens? Oh, it's amazing. What an amazing city. So much culture, so much history. Yeah. It's, uh, it's great to be here and surrounded by so many intelligent people with such diverse points of views. Fantastic. So Tamara, you know, we want to focus our conversation over here mm -hmm. with you around board placements mm -hmm. because that's, uh, you know, part of your expertise. So tell me one thing, what are some of the changes uh, mm -hmm. that you've seen when it comes to board placements in the last few years? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have to say that I think it's more in the last couple of years that there's really been a shift in mm -hmm. terms of um, how people perceive boards, how people perceive the role of boards. Um, and also how boards are uh, supposed to add value hmm. to the organizations uh, which they oversee. Yeah. Um, and I'd say that one of the big shifts that we've seen, actually two big shifts that uh, we've noticed, one is an increased uh, demand mm. for um, diversity on boards. Um, sure. And I think that is uh, definitely uh, coming from a place of wanting to serve with more diverse points of view, increasing innovation, uh, and improving uh, performance and productivity uh, through diverse points of view. Uh, the other thing is um, also related to the generational shift that we're seeing sure. generally in the world uh, workforce as we're seeing baby boomers exit uh, the workforce by mm -hmm. 2030. We're also seeing that uh, boards also are increasingly asking for a reshuffle. Right. Yeah. A reshuffle. Tell me a little bit more. What kind of reshuffle? Is it from, from a diversity perspective? Is it yeah. multi-generational, uh, just more composite boards across? Yeah, maybe let me take a step back and, and sort of say that I think right now we're at a really unique inflection point in history. Sure. Um, what we're seeing right now with artificial intelligence, with the rise of quantum computing, mm. um, and, and all these developments that we're seeing, actually we are at a, at a similar inflection point in history as we would have been had we been living in the times of the Industrial Revolution. Right. And Incredible. so with that really comes um, a, you know, a forced shift in terms of how we look at uh, leadership and mm. how we look at talent, uh, but also just from a really basic perspective, how we look at survival mm -hmm. um, of companies that we've been used to seeing on our supermarket shelves right. and, you know, in our offices for, for generations, actually. Right. right. And you know, I want to I want to double click on that point that you said about we know that there has everyone is acknowledging mm -hmm. and there's a greater awareness for the need of diversity on boards. Yet there's a difference between awareness and execution because you still don't have as much diversity. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing? Why can't companies truly uh, have as diverse of a board as uh, they they probably want? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I want to acknowledge that actually there has been a lot of progress. Right. If we look at the boardrooms of today, if we look at the C-suites of today, there are a lot of women in them, generally sure. speaking, right? So I don't think we have that shock value anymore mm -hmm. when we see... A um, woman on a board. <laughs> yeah, or yeah. also a woman, uh, you know, of a Fortune 500 uh, a company, right? Mm -hmm. or it's, it's really no longer a question of should a woman be there? They right. are there. They are there. Right? And, and that's great, and that is really the result of a lot of affirmative, intentional, you know... Uh, Steps it, taken. Yes, exactly. And that's been a bit of a double-edged sword. Right. Because a lot of women now um, also feel that there is almost like an unconscious bias in the room. Right. That they're there because um, they have to of be their gender, there. right? right. Ah, uh, right. They're there as a, a token uh, to, you know, some regulation, hmm. which uh, is perhaps the case for some individuals, but I would have to say that also women don't make it into those board positions unless they are competent. Of course. Um, and we have seen numerous studies that actually show that um, it's not about diversity, it's really about inclusion. Yeah. Um, and it's really about also um, working against these unconscious biases that we have, mm. that women, um, you know, have to fight harder for mm -hmm. the credibility mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than their male counterparts. Right. Uh, and so I think that is something that we really need to focus on. And I think that is a mindset. Um, it's almost like graduating from that stage of affirmative action yeah. towards a stage of like, well, 
you know, they're here because they're competent. They're competent, absolutely. So I think women don't want to be treated differently. Yeah. I've not ever spoken to one single woman who said, yes, I'm really glad I made it into the boardroom because of my um, gender. Yes, right. She course. wants to be there because, well, I've accomplished She's worked a lot. hard to yes. get there, yeah. absolutely. And she can add value. Add right? value, absolutely. Yeah. And what are, uh, do you think also, because it's, it's, it's newer, as you mentioned, to have more women on boards, we're not as shocked, absolutely, but do women know what are some of the steps? Because it's very intentional and there is work that needs to be done in order to get onto boards. Yeah. What are some of the steps that women should be taking in yeah. order to, in their career early on, in order to position themselves and be ready to be board ready in that sense? Yes. What's your view on that? Such a great topic, <laughs> and I love working with women who are committed to really fulfilling their potential in their careers, as, as well as men. And I always say, you know, one thing that um, we can really learn from our male counterparts is that, um, first of all, they don't care as much about what people think of them <laughs> as, as women do. I think we, yeah. we put a lot of weight on that. Um, and I think one thing I advise all women at whichever stage of their career they're at, create a squad for yourself, right? Right. So that includes creating, um, a, you know, a, a team, whether that consists of a coach. Mm. Um, you also need a mentor, you probably need a few mem mentors, and mm. then really go out and intentionally create sponsors for yourself. Mm. So sponsors are very, very different to uh, a mentor yeah. who may you know, be of goodwill, but um, may not necessarily be someone who is going to talk favorably about you mm. and uh, in meetings that you don't have access to. Yeah. Sponsors are earned, yeah. right? And that comes from really um, intentionally putting your hand up um, uh, and being really intentional about how you come across in the workplace. Right, and th this is in the workplace? Are you saying the mentor, the sponsor, yeah. uh, that squad, is that a squad within the workplace or should it be a hybrid? Of Definitely a hybrid. Got your it. sponsors should be within the workplace. Your mentor is probably a good idea for them to be a mix of inside and outside because yeah. they will help you to increase your network. Yeah. Um, whereas your coach, 100% should be outside of your organization because Got that's it. where you have to be the most vulnerable yeah. in order for, for change to really be able to process and all of that. Fantastic. So that's really on the sort of personal front when yeah. it comes to sort of how you build your CV in order to get to board those ready. board positions. Um, it seems, uh, speaking to a lot of executives, that they feel that the pinnacle mm. is to be a non-executive mm. uh, board director of a <laughs> publicly listed, listed company, company. Yes. right? So that's of like course. the holy grail everybody yeah. goes for. Yeah. And I say that's that's great. That's a wonderful aspiration. It's also not easy. And there's a lot of liabilities. So so think hard about whether that's really where you want to go. Right. Um, and I would say start with. Uh, a, a small space first, yeah. right? Uh, and I would say a, a lot of women that I speak to have been told, oh, you have to go straight for, for that top board position. It does happen, mm -hmm. but more likely than not, um, women or, or men for that matter are picked for board positions because of the network that they've developed. Right. Because of how people speak about them, them. when they're not in the room mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and because of the recommendations that they have off paper. Got it. These things happen in increments mm -hmm. usually for for ordinary people. Right. Um, so I would say put your hand up for advisory boards. Yeah. Right? That's a really great opportunity. Stepping stone to great stepping stone. Um, try and uh, and also look at companies uh, at different stages of growth. You yeah. you might look at a company that's at seed stage um, as well as a company that's maybe series C. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or you might look at some private boards yeah. as well. Right? So, so you can start to add value yes. anyways at any level, but that would just get you step by step from what I'm hearing, that would get you ready step by step for what people might consider the pinnacle exactly. of a board position. Yeah. The, the other thing I would say is, and that's to your point around where you're going to add value. Mm. Um, so boards have specific committees, mm. right? So you've got the audit and risk committee, you've got the nomination committee. Increasingly, you've also got ESG committees, yep. right? Think about where you are most likely to really add a strategic point of view mm. and strategic value to mm. an organization. Mm -hmm. um, also, don't think of it siloed in terms yeah. of I am 
I'm an HR professional, I'm going to work on, on the Remco um, yeah. of a company. You have to think broader, broader in terms of how you're going to add value yeah. because at the end of the day, at board level, you're not, you have to resist the temptation yeah. to give operational advice. Yeah. You're a leader of the organization, not of a function, from what I'm hearing. Yes, I mean, you're really giving strategic vision at, at that level, um, rather than sort of operational yeah. oversight. Right? No, fantastic. Yeah. And my final uh, question, and I'm sure, you know, CGT Partners, you work both with uh, potential board members with the talent, but also with companies. Mm. How can companies strategically partner with CGT uh, uh, partners in order to structure or restructure yeah. or reshuffle, as you mentioned, yeah. uh, their board. So, so let me give you examples of, of the kind of uh, board work we do. So we help companies with um, board effectiveness evaluations. Mm -hmm. um, is the board that you have at the moment fit mm -hmm. for purpose for where you want your company to move towards? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so we do those uh, kind of board effectiveness evaluations. We also um, create advisory boards. So if you are looking to enter into a new market, if you're looking to disrupt uh, competitors, um, those are the kind of uh, instances where we reach out and, and find a board of advisors that may not have fiduciary yeah. responsibilities, but are committed to helping you achieve your next strategic uh, objectives as a company. Fantastic. Yeah. That was really wonderful. Thank you for your You're time, Tamara. Welcome. It was a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you.